Hello. It's so good to be with you again today, and I'm looking forward to see how God will guide our time together. Um, yesterday, we hear the direction God gave to leadership. Today, we're going to look a little further into the role the leadership needs to be playing, and, and what are how do they cover? How are they covered? How does God take care of them? How does God provide? And as we look at this on Thursday, the 22nd of June, it's just a wonderful time to be with you. There's beginning to be summertime here. It's getting a little warmer. I don't know how it is. Some may be getting a little chillier in this southern hemisphere, but here in the northern hemisphere, we're getting a little warmer in our summertime. But I think God is going to get real straight with us now. He's going to give us some good lessons. These books, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, they're sometimes overlooked. And I'm so glad in our living life we're going to truly examine them bit by bit and see the, the little jewels, the precious nuggets the, the value that God has for each of us to, to learn and to apply and to grow in. I just ask that God would truly speak to us today as we consider these portions. Numbers chapter 18, verses 1 through 20. The Lord said to Aaron, you, your sons, and your father's family are to bear the responsibility for offenses against the sanctuary, and you and your sons alone are to bear the responsibility for offenses against the priesthood. Bring your fellow Levites from your ancestral tribe to join you and assist you when you and your sons minister before the tent of the testimony. They are to be responsible to you and are to perform all the duties of the tent but they must not go near the furnishings of the sanctuary or the altar, or both they and you will die. They are to join you and be responsible for the care of the tent of meeting, all the work at the tent, and no one else may come near where you are. You are to be responsible for the care of the sanctuary and the altar, so that wrath will not fall on the Israelites again. I myself have selected your fellow Levites from among the Israelites as a gift to you, dedicated to the Lord to do the work at the Tent of Meeting. But only you and your sons may serve as priests in connection with everything at the altar and inside the curtain. I am giving you the service of the priesthood as a gift. Anyone else who comes near the sanctuary must be put to death. Then the Lord said to Aaron, I myself have put you in charge of the offerings presented to me. All the holy offerings the Israelites give me, I give to you and your sons as your portion and regular share. You are to have the part of the most holy offerings that is kept from the fire. From all the gifts they bring me as most holy offerings, whether grain or sin or guilt offerings, that part belongs to you and your sons. Eat it as something most holy. Every male shall eat it. You must regard it as holy. This also is yours. Whatever is set aside from the gifts of all the wave offerings of the Israelites, I give this to you and your sons and daughters as your regular share. Everyone in your household who is ceremonially clean may eat it. I give you all the finest olive oil and all the finest new wine and grain they give the Lord as the firstfruits of their harvest. All the land's firstfruits that they bring to the Lord will be yours. Everyone in your household who is ceremonially clean may eat it. Everything in Israel that is devoted to the Lord is yours. The first offspring of every womb, both man and animal, that is offered to the Lord is yours. But you must redeem every firstborn son and every firstborn male of unclean animals. When they are a month old, you must redeem them at the redemption price set at five shekels of silver, according to the sanctuary shekel which weighs twenty geras. 
but you must not redeem the firstborn of an ox, a sheep, or a goat. They are holy. Sprinkle their blood on the altar and burn their fat as an offering made by fire, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. Their meat is to be yours, just as the breast of the wave offering and the right thigh are yours. Whatever is set aside from the holy offerings the Israelites present to the Lord I give to you and your sons and daughters as your regular share. It is an everlasting covenant of salt before the Lord for both you and your offspring. The Lord said to Aaron, You will have no inheritance in their land, nor will you have any share among them. I am your share and your inheritance among the Israelites. This Thursday, we're going to be looking at Numbers 18. And we're going to be finding some heavy responsibilities here. Let's look here at Numbers 18, verse 1. And it says, The Lord said to Aaron, You remember, Aaron had been validated as God's choice for leadership in the priestly offices around the tabernacle. It says, The Lord said to Aaron, You... Your sons, your family are to bear the responsibility for the offenses connected with the sanctuary. And you and your sons alone are to bear the responsibility for offenses connected with the priesthood. Oh my. Sometimes people get the feeling that leadership, you, you are above everything. It's not the way God sees it. In this portion, God's holding Aaron and his sons responsible for the conduct, the work, the ministry, the sin that happens in the priesthood. We, uh, over these last several decades, have been faced with some of the indiscretions of the uh, church at different times in different ways. And God doesn't take this lightly because when a leader in a church fails to live up the responsibility they have as a, a leader, that not only brings a bad name upon that individual, but upon the church, upon the tabernacle, upon the people of God. And that's why God is going to hold Aaron and his sons accountable for what things happen in the priestly ministry. They are to take it seriously, not lightly. He goes on to talk about the idea, the idea that, you know, you are responsible to watch over. You know, this would beg the question, the, the real question, when somebody would maybe ask, well, am I, am I my brother's keeper? That was asked in Genesis by Cain regarding Abel. He wanted to shirk the responsibility he had for his brother. And you know what the answer to that question is on God's part? Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, we are. In the church, we are our brother's keeper. Let's not forget it. We need to encourage, guide, admonish, correct, train. These things are the role that the uh, leadership is to be doing within the community of faith. Now this leadership also goes on to require in verse 3 here it says, they are to be responsible to you and are to perform all of the duties of the tent. There's an area of responsibility. Sometimes when I was early in ministry, I was to set up the chairs so that when the others who were giving the Bible study or the meeting, they would come in and the place would be all set up. As an early pastor, it was to do the job that was given to me. I needed to make, set up the chair, make the room ready. And so here it is, the Levites are going to be instructed and to the division of labor for them. Then in verse 6 it says, I, I myself have selected your fellow Levites from among the Israelites as a gift to you. Okay, this is a, this, that's a packed line. Notice, God had chosen who was to be the leaders, the Levites, in this situation. And in what way is he to think about them? 
He's to see them as a wonderful, uh, as a gift from God. Oh, I'm not sure if I always did that. That as I gave leadership in the pastor, I was sometimes disgruntled. I was bothered by, Lord, these leaders you've given me, these people, they, they, they just aren't the right ones. If I only had the right ones, the ministry would be so much better. But what I'm asked to do is realize that those people given to me, and I was, God admonished me because there was an article I read about God was the one giving these people to me to give leadership in that church. Am I questioning God's role? Am I struggling with Him? Am I, am I wagging my finger at Him and saying, God, it's those people you've given me. Sounds a whole lot like what Adam did with Eve in the garden and, you know, trying to blame God for things. But it, it realizing that it, these folks are the gift. But then in verse 7 it goes on and says, But only you and your sons may serve as priests in connection with everything at the altar. That's where the sacrifices would be given. The, the, the wave, all those things that were on the burnt offerings and everything at the altar and inside the curtain would the, be the showbread and the altar of incense and the, the, uh, the lampstand and then the Ark of the Covenant and the Holy of Holies. That, that's where Aaron was to be responsible for it. Then it goes on every, that they are to do everything inside the curtain. And then it goes on, I am giving you this service of the priesthood as a gift. Now there it is that the role that any leader or pastor, anyone that has leadership role, it should be considered not a burden, but a joy. It should be with excitement, with anticipation, with honor that we consider the, the job God's given us. It's a gift from God. When somebody asks me sometimes, well, what do you do for your living? Well, I'm just a pastor. No, I am a pastor, one who serves God. It is a gift from God. This chapter 18 of Numbers lays it out for Aaron and for the future of the Levites. The last part of this passage that we've looked at today speaks again about how God will provide. He will provide the daily needs of the leadership. And I must tell you that as I recognize the role God has given me as a gift, I know that He truly does provide for me, for my family, in a, in a wonderful way. I don't have to look somewhere else, but I trust God in those things. And in this latter portion of 18, we really see the promise God gave to Aaron to provide him. Father God, we thank you that in leadership, you will provide for their needs every day. Lord, as the people that follow leadership, may we be a, a source to provide for those who give leadership to us. And Lord, may we as leaders at times recognize that this is a gift from you, not to be looked on as a burden or to be overwhelmed by, but to realize that you're in charge and you're doing a wonderful work. And we, we get to be part of that great joy of your kingdom work. Father, guide us this day to have that joy and give that joy in your precious name. Amen.